Speaker Mike Johnson endorses the plan for mass deportation. Here it is. We will be dealing with this for decades to come. President Trump has said we want to start the largest deportation effort uh, in history. It's, it's, ne it's needed. We need to find all these dangerous people, criminals. They've emptied out prisons in Central America and sent them all over the border. Wow. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. Few issues here, um, I will get into it. Put up um, the speaker, a feckless leader. Per the New Republic, it was during an appearance at the Hudson Institute, which is a conservative think tank on Monday, that House Speaker Mike Johnson officially endorsed Trump's nightmare, the nightmare and disastrous plan to deport 15 to 20 million human beings, many of them children and elderly, okay, from the United States saying it's needed. Beyond endorsing Trump's horrific anti immigration policy, Johnson called for an isolationist approach to US foreign policy, saying the Republican Party is not one of nation builders or careless intervention, interventionists. We don't believe we should be the world's policemen. Johnson also called, uh, also called to cut costs to overall spending to prioritize funding the country's defense budget, describing the cuts essential for our long-term survival. Here it is. Here it is. All right, we got we got to stop meals on wheels, ladies and gentlemen. We got to, we have to stop feeding the elderly, the sick, the shed in. We don't have money for upward bound or first year college students, but we got plenty of money. We need more of it, as a matter of fact, to kill people and blow things up, to give it to the Department of Defense, which by the way, 88% of it doesn't even go to actual defense. You see the spin here? We have money, but we don't have money. We need to cut from this money to give more money to a place that already has all the money. But they're not um, the nation's police. But they're willing to be the nation's police through their military. You know, funding other militaries, um, you become a proxy international police, okay? You're just letting them do the dirty work, kind of like the mob. All right, the Hudson Institute advertised this. They advertised Johnson's appearance ahead of time as discussed about threats to the US led world order, specifically from China, Russia, and Iran. And a conversation that would detail the speaker's agenda to bolster the credibility of US deterrence, strengthen allies, improve America's hard power, and maintain freedom, security, and prosperity for the American people. You really believe that you're going to do that by putting 15 to 20 million people inside of cages, shipping them to different countries across this globe, and you believe they're going to somehow agree with your stance on Global security, this is, this is what creates the mindset right here. This is what creates the mindset to develop forever enemies of the United States of America. Those children that you will put inside of these deportation camps and cages and ship them, ripping them away from their family members, they will not forget this. One day they will be leaders of their country. What perspective? Will they have of the United States of America? Well, the perspective you gave them, the treatment you gave them. So if your end goal is national security, if your end goal is to develop a more allied relationship with foreign entities, this is the absolute wrong way to do it. And so while you're talking about China and Russia is a threat, those are people that Trump complimented multiple times during his own presidency and damn near wanted to marry. Vladimir Putin, he kicked out Secret Service to have a private, personal, and intimate conversation with the man. So what are we talking about? And, and I understand the Joe Biden thing, and people are talking about his cognitive decline. Okay, you got two elderly white males running. Um, they both have some cognitive issues, believe it or not. But you elect a, a president and a vice president, right? That's what you elect. 
So the Vice President Kamala Harris doesn't have any cognitive issues, even if you believe that she is not your political cup of tea. But here's the reality. Biden's issue doesn't create a constitutional crisis, it creates a constitutional remedy. You got a vice president. Trump, however, creates a constitutional crisis on election day. If he gets into office, he creates a constitutional crisis minute one. Not Biden, there's a remedy for that in the constitution. We have no remedy for Trump, there's more. Let's put it up, we are realist. Claim Johnson about the Republican Party and his endorsement of the largest deportation in US history, despite Pew Research suggesting the number of undocumented immigrants in the US as of 2021 was roughly half of the 20 million Trump wants to deport. We don't seek out a fight, but we know we have to be prepared. We have to be prepared to fight. And if we must fight, we fight with gloves off. Whatever the hell that means. Um, so the reality is when they tell you it's 15 million, 20 million, it's more than that, less than that, all of them are lying because nobody knows, it's undocumented. So they're making these guesstimations of their undocumented worker situation. And then they will tell you, well, this is about jobs in America. Remember, they tried to sell you that, but automation kills more American jobs than undocumented workers. And so if they really cared about jobs, they would divest into automation, which by the way, those jobs never come back to American workers. Those jobs are gone forever. It's not about jobs. It's not even about economy because economy shows you that undocumented workers bring much more to the economy than they take away from the American economy. So they can't make the economic argument. They really can't make the criminal justice argument because per capita undocumented workers commit the least amount of crime compared to every other demographic in the United States of America per capita. So what argument are they making? It's just time to do it. We just have to get it done. All right, so the Lincoln Project released a chilling video of what Trump would impose on America. Here are the highlights. November 5th. 2024, Donald Trump defeats a divided and dispirited Democratic campaign. On January 20th, 2025, Donald Trump is sworn in as the 47th President of the United States. Unfortunately, he keeps his promises. Trump seizes control of a divided government, signing hundreds of executive orders implementing Project 2025. Trump replaces over 50,000 civil servants with hardline MAGA loyalists. The federal oath of office now requires declaring loyalty to the president, not the Constitution. Protected by the Supreme Court's grant of total immunity for official acts, Donald Trump orders the Department of Justice to arrest members of the January 6th Commission, current and former DOJ employees, and political opponents for treason, election interference, and conspiracy. Trump ends birthright citizenship by executive order and turns millions of American-born citizens into illegal aliens overnight. Mass deportations begin. Hundreds of thousands, including legal U.S. residents and American citizens, are imprisoned in newly built camps. Protests erupt. Trump addresses the nation from the Oval Office, invoking the Insurrection Act and declaring the protesters a danger to American sovereignty. He orders the National Guard to use deadly force to suppress the protests. Trump reverses one campaign promise by declaring a national abortion ban by executive order. Challenges to his authority are rejected by the Supreme Court, which has seen new appointments from Trump after it was expanded to 12 justices. It is announced that Trump will run for a third term, claiming he was unfairly cheated in the 2020 election. His Supreme Court ultimately agrees with this interpretation, paving the way for Trump's 2028 re-election. Wow, I don't know who's at the Lincoln Project and is in charge of their marketing, but I wish DNC would have somebody comparable. Um, they nail it every time. So per raw story, President Joe Biden um, remained defiant uh, this week by insisting he was not going to drop out of the race. Um, however, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi still does not appear to be sold. So appearing on MSNBC Wednesday, Pelosi was posed the question about whether Biden had her backing to continue running as the Democrats standard bearer this year. 
She sounded um, non-committal. Here it is. Does he have your support to be the head of the Democratic ticket? As long as the president had the president, it's up to the president to decide if he is going to run. Uh, we're all encouraging him uh, to to make that decision uh, because time is running short. Uh, the uh, I think overwhelming support of the of the caucus. It's not for me to say. I'm not the head of the caucus anymore. But uh, he's beloved. He is respected, and people want him to make that decision, he has, not me. He has said he has made the decision. He has said firmly this week he is going to run. Do you want him to run? I want him to do whatever he decides to do, and that's that's the way it is. Whatever he decides, we go with. I, I don't know if you all understand how bad this is. Pelosi is basically a co-founder of the corporate democratic machine, the modern day one, okay. She typically walks directly in the footsteps of whatever the democratic machine says. He is now at odds, not simply with progressives, not simply with moderates or independents, he's now at odds with gatekeepers that would support him in funding a damn genocide. But they cannot be committal on supporting Biden for running for reelection. This is quite telling to the reality that we face right here in America. Even today, you had another Senator Blumenthal, here it is. I am deeply concerned about Joe Biden winning this November because it is an existential threat to the country if Donald Trump wins. So I think that we have to reach a conclusion as soon as possible. And I think Joe Biden as the Democratic nominee has my support. I mean, come on, man. If you all don't have confidence, in Biden. I mean, you're not even willing to lie about it. Y'all lie all the time. If you all don't have confidence in Biden and you're not willing to lie about it like you lie about a whole lot of other stuff, what's going to happen to the permeation of that ideology to the average voter? What about the Democratic voter? Listen, I get it. I get it. But this is a quagmire you all created. You all did this. You tried to silence the voices of people who said the right thing early on. The leaders in this party who have not been corporately purchased like uh, Senator Turner and others. You decided to silence them, put them off somewhere else, tell them to shut up and don't even wait your turn. You're gone, you're out of democratic politics. The people that could have saved you, the people that could have excited the democratic base, you told them they have no voice. And now, the gatekeepers are starting to realize the wisdom of the young progressives who are trying to tell you and lead the way the whole time. All right, dear brother, thoughts here. Well, Dr. Ritchie, when 84 year old wicked witch of the West, Nancy Pelosi, has a problem with 81 year old Joe Biden running for presidency, yeah. we do have a problem. It is an existential crisis, but it's of all of the United States where we have. One bad solution versus a worse solution. And if that's all we're going by, then we're all in trouble because right wing, left wing, same bird. We're all in this together. Yeah. Secondly, when it comes to President Trump and Mike Johnson's response to immigration and illegal immigration with 20 million approximate illegal immigrants, I'll be honest, I actually agree with mass deportation. And you know who we should start with? The nearly 500,000. European immigrants that we have here, these white illegal immigrants <laughs> that need to leave our country. Let's start and deport some of these Swedish illegal Swedes and That's these right. Norwegians and some of these Brits. They got to go. Most of this stuff is their fault anyway. There you go. And as far as when it comes to things like what the future looks like, the truth is I love TV shows like uh, Man in the High Tower and Handmaid's Tale. I don't want to live in it. And that's, that's right. the future we're looking at. That's right. So well said. 
Um, and you're right. Let, let's go ahead and start with Canadians, who, by the way, are the number one violators of overstay visa. Start with a smaller number, work your way up. So, so let's see how that works in your deportation plan. Uh, but we know that it never happened. Their deportation plan only focuses on people of color. 